Again, thank you all for joining us this afternoon. Um, this wonderful partnership uh, to promote health with Aventura Hospitals and Medical Center. I'm gonna let Bianca and Dr. Hensowich take it away now. Good afternoon. This is Bianca Larice, the Director of Public Relations and Communications for Aventura Hospital. I have the pleasure of introducing Dr. Harry Sandishu. He is a vascular and general surgeon who has been in surgical practice in South Florida for over 30 years. He has held numerous leadership positions, such as president of the medical staff, founding member of the South Florida Society for Vascular Surgery, and secretary treasurer of the Florida Vascular Society. Dr. Sandishu has helped pioneer laparoscopic and gunial hernia repair and has been performing them since 1990. He has performed nearly 2,000 laparoscopic and gunial hernia repairs in addition to numerous other laparoscopic and hernia procedures. Dr. Sandishu graduated from Northwestern University Honors Program in Medical Education. Um, welcome, Dr. Sandishu. Thank you. Today's topic is on hernias. A hernia is a defect, which is a hole in the abdominal musculature, which allows either fat or intestine to protrude and come out. Uh, most hernias are uh, not symptomatic, and when they are symptomatic, they are uh, evaluated. Um, there are three general types of hernias that are present. There's the inguinal hernia, which is in the groin, and that's the most common of the hernias. About 800,000 of inguinal hernias are repaired nationally per year. There are also umbilical hernias and ventral hernias, which are hernias that occur in the abdominal wall where there have been previous incisions uh, that uh, lead to uh, defects. A hernia um, can be a small lump, and the small lump may not be painful. On the other hand, uh, sometimes if something is caught within the lump, it can become very painful. Uh, a hernia that uh, has something caught in it is called an incarcerated hernia, and incarcerated hernias uh, require early attention. People will often ask, are hernias dangerous? Most of the time, hernias are not dangerous. Uh, frequently, they are asymptomatic. People may have had them for months or years before they are aware of them, and sometimes they're just made aware of them when they have their routine physical with their physician. If they have a lump or a bump or it's uncomfortable, uh, they should seek uh, medical care. Uh, hernias are probably the most common procedure done in the country uh, and uh, should be evaluated early. The earlier they are evaluated, the less likely they are to uh, have complications. Um, hernias that are asymptomatic uh, that are repaired usually have less pain after surgery than hernias that have become painful. That is why the recommendation is frequently for a hernia to be repaired uh, early when they are diagnosed. Uh, when should someone see their surgeon? A surgeon should be evaluate should evaluate the hernia as soon as the diagnosis is made. Once the surgeon sees the patient, gets a complete history, and does the physical, you can then approach the case and discuss whether or not a hernia should or should not be repaired. The need for repair is a decision made between the surgeon and the patient based on symptoms and risks. There used to be a feeling that as soon as a hernia is diagnosed, it should be repaired. Over time, that has changed, and the current medical literature is such that hernias should only be repaired if they are symptomatic. Uh, Hernias become more symptomatic when people strain, such as sneezing, coughing, heavy lifting, or anything of that sort. If a hernia is not bothering you, it should still be evaluated. Uh, 
It is nice to have a baseline to know exactly where the patient stands, what the patient's baseline is as to how they are under normal circumstances. And at that point in time, if anything changes, they've already made an acquaintance with the surgeon so that they can be uh, scheduled properly. Also, if it becomes incarcerated, where that lump would pop out and would not be able to push back in, that frequently becomes a surgical emergency. And it is always nice to know that you've made an acquaintance with the surgeon rather than uh, find out who's on call that night. Uh, can a hernia be fixed without surgery? That is a frequently asked question in my office when patients come in. But unfortunately, without surgery, a hernia could not be fixed. All of the exercise in the world and anything else that you do, the best diet, all of those things are excellent for your personal health. None of that will unfortunately fix your hernia. So if you have a hernia, it should be fixed. You like to fix them when they're small because and relatively asymptomatic because at that point in time, they are surgically easier to repair and also the recovery is easier for the patient. Uh, what are the types of repairs? Generally, there, there are two basic types of repairs. There's the open surgical repair, which is the classic repair that's been around forever, and then there's the laparoscopic repair. The open, both repairs are done as an outpatient. One would come in in the morning, have the procedure done, uh, be watched in recovery room, and be sent home. They're able to resume usual activity within a day or two with everything except for heavy lifting or abdominal exercises. All of the different uh, hernias, be it uh, groin hernias, umbilical hernias, or ventral hernias, all will require avoidance of any abdominal exercise or stress for approximately a month. Whether the hernia is done open or laparoscopic is a decision made between the patient and the doctor. It is always best to go to a physician who is comfortable in doing both open and laparoscopic so they don't have a particular bias for either procedure. There are times that only one or the other should be performed or is superior, but that's usually a decision made between the doctor and the patient. The open repair requires a little bit more recovery than does the laparoscopic repair, which is done with three or four very small incisions, each being the largest being about half an inch. Uh, the open repair is generally done with an incision that is about three inches, and uh, both of them have absorbable stitches that uh, don't need to be removed. Both are uh, done in an outpatient setting. The uh, open repair can be done with a local anesthetic. The laparoscopic repair needs to be done uh, with a general anesthetic. The decision as to when to have it done and by whom should be done between the doctor and the patient. It is uh, recommended again, as I've already said, that you come to see the surgeon early, have an evaluation, a discussion with the surgeon so that the, the decision as to which repair, the type of repair shall be done. Virtually all repairs today are done with mesh. There are still some repairs that are done without mesh under certain circumstances. The meshes that are used currently today have been on the market for a long time. We all have read about certain meshes that have been recalled. Those meshes have not been used for many years. Generally speaking, the mesh that's been around has been around for many years. It is very well tolerated. The body does not reject that the risk of infection on any of the hernia repairs are very low.
Are there any questions from our audience? To ask a question, please do not forget to unmute the mic and then you may ask your questions. You do not need to turn on the camera to unmute the mic. The mute button is going to be on the left hand side corner of your screen or smart device. Um, doctor, you're speaking, but we can't hear. You're muted. I hear a sound, can you speak now? There, I couldn't hear you. you never speak to now we can hear him. Would you like me to repeat that last segment? Yes, from the questions, me talking afterwards, there was no sound coming from you. As soon as the diagnosis of a hernia is made, the patient should seek a surgical consultation. The diagnosis is usually confirmed by the surgeon on physical exam. Occasionally, people will get a CAT scan or a sonogram, which will further confirm it, but generally the decision as to whether or not a hernia is present or not is best made by the surgeon on physical exam. Once the diagnosis is confirmed, the surgeon and the patient can discuss the need for surgery, whether it's urgent or not, whether or not surgery is even the best approach. And then they can discuss the different approach for that repair, which would be best suited for that individual. Different repairs are sometimes uh, better designed for certain patients. Not every repair is perfect for each patient, and both the surgeon and the patient need to be flexible as to what is the best repair. And as I've said earlier, it is ideal to see a, a surgeon who is comfortable doing hernia repairs, both open and laparoscopic, so there isn't a technical bias to choose one versus the other. Thank you so much. I don't see questions. Anybody trying to unmute themselves? I have one person that I put in the waiting room because there's something magnetic next to them that disrupts sound when they unmute themselves. So I don't know if they, put, they have a question, but they told me they didn't have any questions. Anybody else? No. 
Also, once the diagnosis of a hernia is made, one can usually continue their normal activity until their surgery is performed. One does not need to stop their normal activity in preparation for the surgery. Thank you all. Thank you, Dr. Sanishu, for that great explanation of 